Cell phones have become so pervasive now that being able to use your cell phone to make a call is maybe something you take for granted. But when you want to call a friend, what needs to happen for phone calls to go through? Two people both need to have working phones with charged batteries, you need to have paid credit with a network service provider, and you need to be within the range of a working cell tower. An entire service chain needs to be in place and functioning for it to work. This is similar to fecal sludge management, which also relies on a complex service chain to function properly. This module provides an introduction to fecal sludge management and the current global situation. Following this module, you will be able to describe what fecal sludge and fecal sludge management are, discuss weak links of the fecal sludge management service chain, and list the components of a complete fecal sludge management service chain. So first of all, what is fecal sludge? Fecal sludge is any combination of wastewater and excreta that comes from on-site sanitation technologies, specifically meaning it has not been transported through a sewer. Examples include pit latrines, unsewered public ablution blocks, septic tanks, and dry toilets. So fecal sludge is highly variable in consistency, quantity, and concentration. Here are some examples of what fecal sludge looks like. This is sludge from septic tanks. You see where samples were taken and what they looked like in the lab. How a septic tank is emptied that is located on an internal courtyard, bringing the hose pipe for the vacuum truck inside. And fecal sludge from different types of pit latrines. Emptying of pit latrines with a vacuum truck and also manually with shovels and forks, and barrels transported with a motorized tricycle. Fecal sludge from public toilets does not mean a specific type of technology, but tends to have different usage and storage times. The fecal sludge management, or FSM, Service chain starts with the on-site storage or containment of fecal sludge shown here in septic tanks and pit latrines, which then needs to be collected and transported to treatment facilities, where it is adequately treated for the intended end use and then ends with resource recovery or safe disposal. Fecal sludge management represents a very significant global need. This figure made by the Boston Consulting Group illustrates the global population served by on-site sanitation, all of which are in need of fecal sludge management. So globally, 2.7 billion people, or 40% of the entire world's population, are served by on-site sanitation technologies. In urban areas of Africa, Asia, and Latin America, this accounts for around 1 billion people. And that number is expected to grow to 5 billion by 2030. In most of these cities, the majority of sanitation is provided through on-site technologies, not sewers, providing even up to 100% of sanitation coverage in urban areas. However, the reality is that in low- and middle-income countries, there is typically no management system in place for the resulting fecal sludge. The result is that it frequently ends up dumped directly into the urban environment. Problems in the service chain are households that cannot afford to pay someone to empty their system, so they're forced to find alternative solutions like just digging it out themselves. Manual emptiers, who once they've emptied the systems, it's physically impossible for them to transport at long distances. Mechanical emptiers, that have trucks that once they've emptied the sludge, the distances are too far for them to transport it to treatment facilities or traffic is just simply too bad for them to get to the treatment facility. The general lack of treatment facilities in most cities and fecal sludge that is used or disposed of in un unhygienic ways. Examples of how this looks are poorly constructed and maintained facilities. Digging a hole in the street right outside of a house 
so that the contents of a septic tank that is illegally emptied manually with buckets can be illegally dumped into it right in the street. Breaking a hole in the base of the containment so the fecal sludge will just drain directly out, emptiers who have to get inside of septic tanks or other containment technologies to remove the sludge with shovels, a discharge channel for sludge trucks that drains directly onto the beach and into the ocean, illegal emptying of sludge trucks directly into the environment, and scavenging fecal sludge for unsafe use in urban agriculture. So clearly, providing adequate access to sanitation facilities does not end when on-site technologies are built. That is just the start. What happens after they become full? It is imperative to also take a longer-term focus, which moves beyond the household level. The Sustainable Development Goals, or SDGs, will hopefully have a positive impact as they now include fecal sludge management. The target to achieve access to adequate and equitable sanitation has been upgraded to include the safe disposal or off-site treatment of excreta. It is important to keep in mind that on-site or decentralized technologies can provide sustainable solutions in all areas of the world. Sewer-based solutions are effective, but are also very resource-intensive and expensive. In a side-by-side -side comparison in Dakar, Senegal, the sewer service chain was found to be five times more expensive than the existing fecal sludge management service chain. So fecal sludge management can be considered a long-term viable option and possibly more sustainable compared to sewer-based systems if the entire service chain is adequately managed. We need to simultaneously address how to immediately start getting excreta safely out of the urban environment while simultaneously developing sustainable and globally relevant solutions for managing fecal sludge into the future. In the following modules, we will present examples of solutions that are being implemented. One of the most important things to realize is that fecal sludge management is not only about technology. It's about a complex service chain that depends on interactions among people at every step. The way forward to finding sustainable future solutions for fecal sludge management includes overcoming bottlenecks at the crossroads of planning, management, and technology, all of which you will hear about in future modules. This is the same integrated approach presented in the book, Fecal Sludge Management, System Space Approach to Implementation and Operation. In this module, you had an introduction to what fecal sludge and fecal sludge management are, the current status of weak links in the service chain in low-income countries, and components of a fully functioning service chain from the household level to the final end use or safe disposal. Thanks for joining. See you next time.